What was wrong with the worst hotel room you ever had? My girlfriend and I walked in after being gone all day, and felt something wet on the floor. Lights were out and it was night time so we couldn't tell what it was. Turn on the lights to see the toilet is just broken. Didn't overflow, the tank is just cracked and water is pouring everywhere. The entire bedroom and bathroom is soaked. Go down to let them know and request money back and cancel the room for that night, they offer us another room instead. Okay, sure. Walk into the new room, someone is already duking staying there. The poor woman looked horrified when we walked in. Got all our cash back after that and left. Robbers having a shootout with hotel security in Isla de Margarita, Venezuela. At the time I was trapped in the bathroom facing the gunfight, having severe diarrhea. Next morning hotel security were now 10 guys with AK-47s and staff cutting down all trees close to hotel walls. Not sure if the gunfight or the stomach bug, which I got from the all-inclusive buffet, was worse. The heater caught on fire when we turned it on. You want heat? Here's your ducking heat. LOL. Basically. With a side of smoke. Found the creepy old guy that runs the place behind the motel peeking in my window, while I was there. My work was paying for the place and I told them move me now, or I'm going to need bail money. I can only imagine what he did while I wasn't there. Same thing he was doing while you were there it just would take him longer. Ah yes. Polishing shoes. This isn't gross like most of them but I once got a hotel room where the bathroom wasn't in a separate room, or even closed off at all. One of the walls just had a toilet up against it and there was a sink off to the other side, and a completely glass shower stall. The third of the room that had the bathroom stuff was all tiled and I would keep stubbing my toe on the ledge back to the carpet, it was weird as duck. In Fresno, the worst town in history, way worse than Jonestown. Clerk is like, you don't want to stay here. Seriously, here's the key, go check it out. Door wasn't locked, light wouldn't turn on, but I could see the cockroaches crawling on the mini fridge. Yeah, okay, nope. Well I give the clerk points for being honest at least. It ain't named Fresh Yes. H syringes under the bed in the complimentary Bible and the nightstand had schizophrenic type posted notes littered throughout its pages. For $35 a night I couldn't complain. I slept in my clothes though haha. Well let's be realistic here, your salvation from the torments of hell was worth the $35. The notes were probably shortcuts. You need to be a bit more grateful. Found two needles in the room. We're promptly moved to another room with stained sheets. No more cheap hotels. There were elevators on each side of our hotel room. Both shafts had a loud bell that rang when the car arrived on the floor, plus, we could feel shaft vibrations in our bed. Not only did we hear the elevator doors opening and closing, with percussive bells, but hotel guests would often stand outside our room door talking in full voice during the night as they waited for their elevator to arrive. Shaft vibrations smile. I am so glad I'm not the only one that giggled. Motel in Charlottetown, pay. Our hotel room was in the basement down a long, dark hallway with half the bulbs burned out and around two or three corners, was fully prepared to meet a murderer in the dark. Got into the room, whole bunch of stuff was duct taped together. Air conditioner duct taped in several places and duct taped into the window. Shower head repaired with duct tape. Duct tape holding the couch and desk together. It was like being in Red Green's motel. If you couldn't find them handsome, you could at least find them handy. A cheap comfort inn in Kingsville, Texas went to use a blow dryer. Pointed it towards my head and turned it on, and then an object blew out of the dryer, slapped against my forehead and bounced into the sink. Took me a moment to realize it was a live cockroach. Nope nope no no thanks I'm good. We choose a ground floor hotel room in Cancun. Unfortunately there was a gap on the bottom of the front door and the room was overrun by palmetto bugs. The damn things fly, they sound like little helicopters. Girlfriend woke me up asking what the sound was, turned on the light and holy shit they were on the floor, the walls and on our bed. We literally just put on our clothes after shaking them out a few times and went through the balcony exit, went to the concierge and demanded a room on the fourth floor. After they saw the room they stopped arguing and comped us dinner and drinks plus gave us a new room. It was NYC in January. The window was jammed open, but with the heat on it just about evened out at around 18 degrees in the room. The door had an extra interior bolt on it because the key cards weren't secure, 
We found this out at 3 a.m. when a kind security guard woke us up to ask if this door is supposed to be wide open? Um, no. The water ran brown and at one point and wouldn't shut off. I ran to get someone and found a maid. English was her second language but she spoke it fine, the trouble was that I'm Scottish, and in my blind panic I forgot the word faucet and kept saying the tap broke water is coming oh god the tap and she kept saying tap, tap, and tapping on objects in utter confusion. By the time we got to the room it was minutes away from flooding over the side of the tub. None of that compared to our friends down the hall, who found the word murder written on their window. When they tried to wipe it off it was written backwards on the outside, and the window was stuck shut. Great hotel. So I fell asleep with the door locked, sleeping in the chair because the bed was broken. Woke up with three homeless guys watching TV in my room. They seemed pretty cool but it still freaked me the hell out. Hello? Homeless guy number one, shh, we're trying to watch TV. Found myself stranded in a small town in Colombia. I asked a police officer for the cheapest place to stay, he pointed me in one direction but also suggested the second cheapest hotel. I dismissed his suggestion figuring I'd be leaving early the next day. I went down into a basement and knocked on a metal door and this elderly woman let me in but was surprised that I wanted to stay. I asked her how much for the night and it took a minute for her to calculate it. We start walking to the room and from the room next door emerges a guy and a hooker. The guy pays the old woman for the hour room rental and I realized where I was staying. The room had a plywood bed with a blanket for a mattress and used condoms in the trash. There were earrings on the sink and the shower was just a pipe in the wall. I fell asleep on top of the bed to the sweet sound of Colombians copulating. Was staying in a budget inn in Maryland while visiting DC and someone was murdered in the same hotel. Good old Maryland. Wow. The door would only lock or open from the outside so I had to call the desk clerk to let me out. That sounds insanely dangerous in case of a fire. Good thing nothing happened. Nah. In case of fire the walls will just burn down and then you can escape. Cockroaches everywhere. Climbing the walls, on the bed, in the shower. Disgusting. We went to the manager slash owner to tell him we need another room or a refund because of all the cockroaches. He said there were no cockroaches in that room. Like both of us were just hallucinating all these bugs right? So, he gives us another room. We only found one cockroach in that entire room and we took it outside and threw it in the bushes, and it was so early in the morning both of us were like duck it and went to sleep. Some seedy place in Montreal, the whole place stunk of cigarette smoke, but the icing in the cake was that someone came into the room and switched on the light during the night, waking me up. I was sleeping naked and was too scared to move, I was 20 and spending my first night in Canada, so I just stayed perfectly still while the person stood at the door. After probably 20 seconds, the light went off and they disappeared. Left on a bus to Quebec City early the next morning so never found out what it was to do would. That sounds scary as duck. On our way back from a trip to Canada, my friends and I stopped at a Motel 6 in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It was by far the cheapest room we had booked the entire trip and we were already wary of it before we even started seeing all the anti-meth billboards lining the highway leading up to it. It had been a long boring day of driving and we figured it wouldn't much matter. We pulled into the parking lot to a shouting match between a car full of people and the management. We kind of sat there, building up our nerve before the driver hopped into his car and peeled out of the lot. We eventually claimed our room and went to get situated. We ignored the crumbs on the floor set our things down, too road weary and hungry to really care. We found a menu for a pizza delivery place in our room, Godfather's I think it was called, and got that sorted out before one of us had to use the toilet. The bathroom was just filthy in general, but there was a dirty, used bandage on the floor and a bra hanging on the hook on the back of the door. I think any normal person would have left, but we were young, tired, and figured we'd just tough it out. For some reason it didn't occur to us that the bed sheets might be similarly soiled. We went outside to smoke while waiting for the pizza to show up and wandered around a bit. They had a basketball hoop that had been dunked on so hard, the hoop was practically parallel to the board, as well as missing a net. But we didn't have a ball handy anyway, so it was no great loss. After a few minutes we saw the manager hastily walk by followed by someone who we assumed to be a customer. He was speaking in what seemed to us like an official sort of tone and we just sort of figured someone less hardy than ourselves had complained about their room. The manager was basically a skinny version of that neckbeard guy meme. Bad acne, glasses, ponytail, etc. The woman following him was rather unpleasant looking, morbidly obese, 
and wearing grey sweatpants and a Tweety Bird t-shirt. They both disappeared into a room, thinking she was showing him what a mess it was in there, and forgot about them for a while. Not five minutes later, they both came out of the room holding hands and smoking cigarettes. So, yeah. Motel 6 in Kalamazoo. Can't say I recommend it. The worst hotel room I had was in India. The whole room was covered in a layer of dust and dirt, and the electricity kept going off random times of the day and the ceiling fan would turn off, I stayed in because the heat made me sick, and that ceiling fan was my only hope, the shower was also broken and kept spraying everywhere, and there were pigeons right outside the windows so at all times of day and night I kept hearing wings and cooing. If you travel in India, shell out the extra money for a more expensive hotel room. One of them that comes into mind. My girlfriend and I decided too late to spend a couple of days at the beach and being in full season, all the nice hotels were either full or really expensive at this point. The one we found was rated 2 stars and was relatively cheap. We thought well. It can't be all that bad. When we arrived at the hotel the maids were still cleaning the room as we had to wait for a while. After they finished, we got in and it was still filthy. Crumbs all over the floor and bed, the furniture peeled and dirty. The sheets stained with all colors of what a human being is capable of creating. I won't go into what the bathroom looked like because there aren't enough words to describe it. I will however talk about the balcony. It was a lake. It was filled with water and moss growing in it. I looked around for the drain but there was none to see. I though this is an idiocy but still wouldn't believe it. So I leaned over the edge to see if there's the drain pipe on the outside that comes out of the balcony. It was there, but on the inside everything looked smooth in the water. I found a stick and scraped the spot until the drain hole started to show. The water started pouring out and the day was saved. I ruined what nature was trying to build in that balcony for what appeared to me to be years. The view was nice though. The carpet was black. Under the bed it was green. I've always had pleasant experiences with hotels, so unfortunately no gross out weird stories from me. The worst experience I ever had was when I was traveling and ended up in staying at a place halfway to my destination. I was in my room just hanging out. Ordered a pizza from the place on the pamphlet on my bed and waited for it to arrive. I got a call from the pizza delivery guy apologizing and saying he didn't think he could deliver my food. I asked why, genuinely curious and awaiting a good story about how he ate it or something. No, he said there was about 30 guys in the parking lot having a fist fight. I walked outside. Looked down from the balcony and watched about 30 guys duke it out. Pizza guy walked the long way and brought me my pizza. I tipped him big for being a bro and taking the long way and we watched these guys beat the shit out of each other. Pizza guy left. I sat down to eat pizza back in my room and decided to call the police because, well, someone should. I guess. I ended the call and went back to watching TV. Pizza was shit. There was spaghetti on the couch, tire marks in the tub and fingernails in the bed. Suffice to say, no one was tipped. Edit, to clarify on the spaghetti, there was a bunch of sauce on this little couch slash table thing that you rest your legs on, and I have no idea where it came from. It was on the far end part that was under a bigger table too, so someone basically pulled it out, ate some spaghetti on the end, and never cleaned up, I guess. That hotel needs a more strict spaghetti policy. Did a long-term stay at a really old motel converted into temporary housing in Oklahoma. Across from a cemetery. Never got colder than 85F inside, tarantulas and the occasional snake outside the only exit. Rampant with mice that did not mind crawling on the stove or up your phone charger into your bed. I ended up putting steel wool under the legs of the bed and the kitchen table and sprinkling cat hair around those areas taken from the local liquor store cats. Bleached everything constantly. Took power naps in the car when I could. Steel wool and cat hair? Is that how to prepare a magic spell? What does that do? AIDS 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 was scratched into the TV with a knife. Dare is more, but do I need to say more? Last minute Vegas road trip on Memorial Day weekend. All the hotel rooms were booked so we stayed at this small motel on the corner of the strip. The room was basically made for prostitutes. The TV played the cop radios that were in the area. We just put our stuff in there went out, came back in the morning and left. It had mirrors above the bed on the ceiling, so you know, you can watch yourself watching TV. It was at a Greek mythology themed casino slash hotel resort in Macau, China, the Asian Las Vegas pretty much, and the hotel was shut down recently due to public safety concerns. 
Anyways so it was our first night in the city and my family and our cousins checked into the hotel. Having been to Vegas themed hotels, I expected at least a similar quality, but the hallways were dark and shabby, with a tad smell of liquor and cigarettes in the air. And this was just the beginning. The showers were dark and there was long black hair on the shower floor, not unlike a horror movie. The TV was an old box that played in black and white and very static in color, this was 2014, at a resort, then the final straw came when my dad moved the sofas to make small beds for our cousins, and there was had looked like a shotgun hole hidden by the sofa and a used condom, still leaking the lustful fluids from those before. Our uncle arrived too the next day and set us up in a much nicer 5 star Venetian smile. While we were in Egypt, one of my friends found a small green lizard in his room. He got closer and closer to it but it didn't move. So he tried talking to it. Hello Mr. Lizard. No response, of course, so he then decided to poke it with a pen because he was clearly asleep. The problem is Mr. Lizard wasn't asleep, he was definitely dead. When he poked it, its belly stuck to the carpet and all his guts spilled out. Oh no. Mr. Lizard. Edit. French autocorrect, thanks for listening to another episode of Redditex. Subscribe and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any stories. Feel free to share your own stories below in the comments. Have a good day.